are here to fight for the poor folks of, the, of this country. There's over 100 million people who don't have the basics of what they need to live, the income they need, the, the education the kids need, health care for what they need. We think that's a fundamental right. So we're here in the capital, among the most powerful countries in the, in the United in the world, to say, you know, enough's enough. We want, we want rights, we want money, we want the investment in our community. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. At my signal, unleash hell. Gathering before the U.S. Capitol, a diverse group of thousands rallied under the banner of the Poor People's Campaign, calling for a moral revival in the United States. The rally featured impassioned speakers, songs demanding justice, and prayers from clergy of many religions, including a sacred song by Native Americans from the Apache tribe. What's being called the new Poor People's Campaign kicked off today with a rally in front of the U.S. Capitol building. Organizers are holding workshops, teach-ins, and trainings in peaceful civil disobedience. They draw inspiration from the 1968 initiative planned by the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. The coalition will involve 40 days of protests and direct action. This is not fellowship, this is revolution. Bring this mic up some mic man, because we intend to get loud and draw a crowd. The campaigners demand living wages for workers, universal health care, an end to institutionalized racism, police violence, and mass incarceration, more funding for schools and social programs and less for the military, and an end to environmental destruction. Among the principles of the Poor People's Campaign are a belief, quote, in the dismantling of unjust criminalization systems that exploit poor communities and communities of color and the transformation of the war economy into a peace economy that values all humanity. Another says, quote, poverty and economic inequality cannot be understood apart from a society built on white supremacy. There are about 40 million people living in poverty in the United States, according to official statistics from the U.S. Census Bureau. But some researchers say the number is much higher, as high as 140 million. Whatever the true number, for the people who gathered here, it's far too many. Here in the nation's capital, income inequality is the highest in the country. Households in the top 20% of income have 29 times more than the bottom 20%. DC's poverty rate at 18.6% is significantly higher than the national average of 12.7%. African American residents are the most affected. They are the only racial group to experience an increase in poverty rates since before the Great Recession of 2008. And I think that the Poor People's Campaign is doing something particularly radical in calling out systemic poverty as an evil, an evil that the United States can very easily quell, solve. The rally comes as the Trump administration is seeking cuts in food stamps, federally subsidized housing, and so-called work requirements at poverty wages to stay eligible for aid. Uh, I'm an African-American woman. Uh, I'm a child who benefited from the movement of the 1960s, and this is really just a continuation of that work with a 21st century angle. The campaign is modeled on a similar movement that began 50 years ago by Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. before his assassination in April 1968. That summer, tens of thousands marched and set up a sprawling camp on the National Mall called Resurrection City. The nation has got to come to grips with the fact there are too many poor people in our country and we have enough uh, so that no one should live in those situations. Civil rights leader Jesse Jackson was there. Dr. King, we must choose healing at home and not killing abroad. Protesters said the forced separation of migrant families by the Trump administration shows the country's leadership is morally blind. It's not just Trump, it's been like this since we founded this country. Um, the immigration issue has, is particularly acute now. Poverty is not an impossible problem to solve. That we have enough wealth in this country to make sure that no child goes hungry, that uh, every family has affordable housing, and that we can provide living wage jobs. Campaign organizers say they are only beginning their fight. They plan a major drive to get poor people and their supporters to the polls in the November elections to vote for a profound change in U.S. society.
What up y'all, it's Devin with UpTV aka The Dot Connector and it's no surprise that we face issues with poverty in America and around the world. Tupac said they got money for wars but can't feed the poor, it's time we make a change. The sad part about the poor people's campaign is how little news coverage is receiving because the truth remains that those in power and with a lot of money are not willing to share with people like you and me, the poor, the people who are a part of a lower social class. So today, I'm here with Amber Nicole to discuss the problems and solutions that we believe will help alleviate the problems of the poor across the nation and the world. The income gap is widening in America. This crisis is definitely visible when you can take three of the richest Americans and they have more money than 50% of the lower income population. So those figures should be pretty much frightening to y'all. Um, only three people have more than 50% of the lower income population in America. Think about that. That's very frightening. Uh, so when I take a look at the Poor People's Campaign, it really excites me and it really gets me going because I feel like this is what we should be focusing on in America, bringing equality to all Americans um, on an income level. Um, and some of the things they're requesting like universal health care, I feel like should already be implemented within our society. Yes, I definitely agree. A few of the other topics that they were concerned about was housing, having decent housing for all people, also equal access to education in the SNAP attacks, um, people who are receiving food stamps, also put it into profiteering on student debt. And another thing they had mentioned was a guaranteed annual income which this reminds me of the universal basic income, except for instead of it being annually, it is monthly. So there's a mayor in California who I think is taking a step in the right direction. Um, it is his goal to bring up the conversation of UBI around America. If For those who don't know, UBI is universal basic income. Um, and he's actually started a program in California and when I say this, universal basic income isn't the solution to everything, but it's definitely a solution to a lot of people's problems. It's definitely a solution to poverty in America. And I believe that it's a step in the right direction. I feel like we're moving into a technological age where machines are taking over people's jobs. AI is taking over jobs and we need something like universal basic income uh, to battle um, unemployment. So here is a clip of this wonderful mayor. He was only 26 years old when he was elected into office, which is amazing. And he was only 22 when he was elected on his local city council. Um, so check it out. The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown, but long for still. And his tune is heard on the distant hill because this cage bird sings of freedom. Every 30 seconds in America, a child is born into the cage of poverty. You've started the Stockton Economic Empowerment Demonstration. Um, it's seed for short, clever, I get it. Uh, <laughs> okay, so what is it? In 2016, Michael Tubbs was elected mayor at the age of 26. He is the youngest mayor of a city with more than 100,000 people and is Stockton's first African-American mayor. Mayor Tubbs is addressing his town's poverty with an innovative and controversial program to give some Stockton residents $500 a month to fight economic hardship. Um, so SEED is the first city-led uh, guaranteed income demonstration. So the idea is that right now we're still in the design phase, but the idea is that at least 100 families will be given $500 a month um, as, a, as a pilot or a demonstration to see that what happens when people are given what people call a basic income or universal basic income or a guaranteed income. And poverty is a critical issue for our community because poverty is correlated with all types of other negative social ills. A child born in poverty is more than likely to be in the 86% of African-American children the 83% of Latino children, and the 58% of white children who can't read 
or do math at grade level in fourth, eighth, or twelfth grade. Well, it's interesting because the idea is almost as old as the Republic. Um, so Thomas Paine was calling for this in the Grand Revolution, Dr. King before he passed, even Richard Nixon. Um, the idea is that, especially in California, one in two Californians can't afford one $400 emergency. Uh, people are working for harder and harder, only to fall further and further behind. Um, so a group called the Economic Security Project was looking for a city to pilot with philanthropic funding, no taxpayer dollars. And given the challenges of Stockton, but also given the resilience and the brilliance of the bar residents, I thought it would be a good fit for us. We have concerned community members. So before I leave this stage, I just want to share briefly with you four things that will help all the young people in our community, in our city, in our nation who are trapped in a cycle of poverty, how to upset the setup. Number one. First, we have to admit the setup is real. I don't like the term experiment, so it's more of a, a demonstration. Um, we were able to get a million dollars from the Economic Security Project and another quarter million dollars from the Goldbridge Foundation. Um, with that money, we're, we're thinking we'll be able to serve 100 families at least with $500 a month for 18 months. And the idea is not that it's going to solve all the issues, but to really kind of help have a conversation in this country about the current economic conditions that many people live in. You know, kind of the first stop of the criticism is give people money and they won't work. It doesn't incentivize them. It's just a welfare program. But what's interesting, the research says something different. So there was a study done in the Eastern Band in the Cherokee Native Americans that found $4,000 to $6,000 a year did good things for the folks, that educational attainment rose, drug use went down, and there was no um, labor market impact. So we're hoping to see something similar in Stockton. Too often, too, people say, well, Michael, you made it. You went to Stanford. Anybody can make it. No, anybody can make it, but statistically, it's not possible. And students, young people know, they're not dumb. They feel a sense of powerlessness. They, they read the news, they walk in the neighborhoods, they go to the schools, and they realize that failure is not only an option, but seemingly seems to operate as a destiny. So the first thing we do is always be real with our students and say, you know what, the setup is real. So the idea is to show the efficacy of the idea of a basic income with the hopes that will spark a larger discussion, not just in the city, but in the state and even the nation around sort of the economic floor people deserve. You've got a wide span of supporters, everyone from Bernie Sanders to Elon Musk to Richard Branson support this initiative, and it's beginning in August, right, of this year? Ideally in August. We just hired a program director, um, and so the next couple months she'll be working with the community to really get community input, figure out criteria and selection, work out the kinks, and hopefully by the time school starts, we're starting. But we don't leave them there. The second thing we do, we empower versus inspire. And that's not me playing with semantics. If I'm trying to inspire you, that means Michael Tubbs has some secret knowledge to give you. I'm going to give you inspiration. But I submit to you today that people in poverty don't need to be inspired to not be poor. No one needs to be inspired. No, seriously. And I also think we probably both agree that the current system's not working for the vast majority of people either. So we have to begin thinking about, okay, where are some other things we can do to improve and, and work on the social safety net? So I'm a nerd and I'm incredibly excited to see what happens. Like when it's out in the world, when people have it, what actually happens and how do we take those learnings and translate that into policy. So the idea is that it be as universal as possible, meaning you and me. So someone who makes $70,000 could get it, someone who makes $7,000 would be equally eligible to well qualify. Um, and then the second tenet will be that it'll be no strings attached, that we trust that people are smart and resilient and so we make the best decision for them and their families with the money, understanding that everyone's not going to do it right, I guess, but that doesn't happen in the status quo anyway. It's a penalty. If no one needs to be inspired to not be hungry. No one needs to be inspired to not hear gunshots every night. No one needs inspiration to break the cycle of poverty. Are you kidding me? What they need is to be empowered. So if, if I'm inspiring you, I'm giving you something. But in the Leadership Academy, we empower. We let the student, students see what they have inside them, how they themselves have all the skills needed to upset the setup. So we only had a short clip of Michael Tubbs doing a TED Talk show where he goes into more detail over how education changed the direction of his life. Education is a key factor to upsetting the setup. We must educate ourselves. We must educate our children, our community, our family, our friends. This doesn't end with Michael Tubbs. We have to actively demand a better lifestyle, one built on the knowledge we have acquired, but very seldomly does America apply any of the knowledge and studies done from scientific research 
or um, things that they have repeatedly proven that living on survival mode is unhealthy. It creates a great deal of stress and you become a, a lesser worker, a lesser person. You don't have time to find your passion. You don't have time to go after what you're best at. You don't have time to find yourself because all you know is bills are due and, and one way or another, with or without a job, you have to make do. Exactly. Every day it's a struggle for us to get by and every day we're just barely making it by on survival mode. And so I think the big lesson here is to not let what Michael Tubbs is doing cause us to have the bystander effect where we're basically sitting back saying don't worry uh, somebody else is going to handle this Michael Tubbs is going to handle this no this is why the the poor people's campaign is so important um, to society today this is why uh, what these people are doing is a good thing because we need to make our voices heard every single day as the poor people we need to try a different way to function in society because the old way isn't working um and so when you come when it comes to this topic i just really hope that people take from this and and, and they get the passion the energy um and the 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 love for really going out and helping poor people and if there's somebody on this channel who's watching who's particularly wealthy this isn't an, an attack on the wealthy um, and this isn't to say that poor people should just be handed things, but understand that there is a major gap between rich and poor. Um, you know, when you talk about the middle class, I don't even consider there to be a middle class anymore in America. You're either rich or you're poor now. So in my opinion, the true solution to economic equality is them releasing something like UBI, Universal basic income and what michael tubbs is doing right now is very great uh five hundred dollars a month is is good i would really like to see it around a thousand dollars a month um sort of like what alaska does um and you know when you look at the statistics of places that have done ubi they're doing great their economy is thriving um violence has gone down drug use has gone down unemployment has gone gone down um, and so it's just so far has been proven over and over again that it works. So it will be very interesting to see what actually takes place in Stockton, California, once they release this um, in August. Hopefully it comes out on time. Um, so that way we can see how this actually works in this community, um, because it may be the roadmap to us legalizing or having some form of ubi across america period um so how do you feel about ubi do you think that it will be successful in stockton california do you think that what michael tubbs is doing is a great thing um and what do you think the real solution to poverty in america is sound off in the comment section and let us know this is devin with amber nicole today don't forget to like and subscribe. Also hit that bell so you get notified anytime we upload a new video. We love you family and we'll holla at y'all later. Peace. It's actually much more affordable than most people think. Um, so the headline number is about $2 trillion. Our economy is about 19 trillion, so uh, that seems like a lot. But if you dig into the numbers, you find that we're spending about $500 billion right now on income support in various ways, in kind, food stamps, welfare, housing, um, social security disability. And this would be overlapping. So if someone's receiving, let's say, $700 in benefits right now, then you go to them and say, hey, you can keep your current benefits or you can go to the Freedom Dividend and get $1,000 a month free and So clear. they would have the option. They would have the option. But because we're already spending $500 billion, this thing is 25% paid for before you uh, even get started. Because you wouldn't be able to have both. You wouldn't yeah, be no, able I mean, to that, have Medicare. I mean, th that was one of my questions, is what it would do to other governmental assistance programs. Yes. So I, I believe that we need to transition to a Medicare for All uh, program because healthcare is one of the um, major stressors and costs for both American families and individuals, but also businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's 18% of the economy. It's uh, not 
giving us proper value because it's not like our healthcare outcomes are twice as good as other countries even though we're spending twice as much. But my proposal to pay for universal basic income does not touch um, Medicaid, Medicare, the 500 billion uh, I described does not include those programs. Social Security. Um, so it includes Social Security disability, which okay. is when individuals, uh, you know, are receiving income support. So uh, the big problem we're facing as a society is that more and more work is being done um, by machines, robots, AI, uh, software, uh, and income tax is a terribly inefficient way of actually harvesting that value um, for the public. So if you look at it, who are going to be the beneficiaries of these, this transition to automation? It's going to be large tech companies who are excellent at not paying uh, a lot of tax. Very good just, at uh, offshore tax Yeah, they'll havens. move it over and like say it all went through Ireland. Um, small tech companies, which are often not profitable, and then if they do get acquired, it's maybe a one-time thing and they might have to pay uh, on an acquisition at a certain point, but even then it's at a capital gains rate. So like there's just not a lot of money that's going to be coming to the public even as more and more work is going to be done um, by robots and software. So that's what we need to change and that's the way we pay for universal basic income. Thank you for watching Up TV. If you like this video and would love to see more, check out these great videos here and don't forget to subscribe to Up TV and Up TV 2 for even more great videos.